to Project Arts Nationwide Mattel Masterclass Week. My name is Danielle Steele and I am Project Art Miami's director. Tonight we welcome our student community from nine cities across the nation to come together and learn a special technique from a Mattel designer and meet other Project Art students your age nationwide. We also welcome our students who are watching us on our online platforms. Thanks for participating. Remember to send us a picture of your work after today's lesson to info at projectart.org or to your local program director. And finally, we welcome Carlos Rosales, today's masterclass instructor. Carlos is a product designer currently living in his hometown of Miami, Florida. Visual art has always played a large role in his understanding of the world around him. Surrounded by botanical gardens and vivid wildlife, his design language is always growing. As an honors graduate and full scholar from Rhode Island School of Design, he received his BFA in illustration and graphic design. He has made a point to focus his talents on effective communication and innovation. Carlos, take it away. Wow, thank you so much, Danielle. I really appreciate the intro. And uh, hi to everybody, everybody at home and everybody seeing us online. It's a pleasure to have you guys all here. Uh, my name is Carlos Rosales. You can call me Mr. Carlos. It is a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk about some toys. So hopefully uh, everybody's got some materials going, everybody's ready with their big pieces of paper, got writing utensils, drawing utensils, watercolors, colors, markers, pens, and of course your favorite couple toys if you got them. So for today guys, for a warm up, I do want us to shake it up a little bit. You know, when you guys probably had a long day during the afternoon, maybe you're just starting out your day, but either way, drawing is for fun. Drawing is something that we all get to do to really express ourselves and to really, you know, think differently. So I think this should be something that we should do for fun. And it should be a good opportunity to kind of get loose, shake it all out and uh, really get started. So if you can stand up, stand up. If you can, if you're in a good place to stand up, if you're not, you can do it while you're seated as well. But I want everybody to put their hands out as far wide as they can, just to really stretch, really get a feeling of everything in your space. It's really good, nice, nice, I see it. Make sure your fingertips are nice and wide. And now wiggle. Make sure you wiggle your whole self. Make sure you get nice and loose. This is super important. Trust me, professional artists do this all the time, guys. This is super critical to the creative process. Nice, nice shake. I like it. I like it. Good energy. Good energy. Stop. Nice, nice. Good stop. Good stop. That little going, but there's some pretty good stops. I like it. Let's give it one more big old breathe in. And as everybody breathes out, let's make sure our arms go down. Whew. That was a good old stretch. And if you guys like that, let's do one more. I'm going to do one more. You don't have to, but I like to do this one. Into your nose, out through your mouth. Ooh, that was a pretty good one. All right, cool. Well, hopefully everybody's a little bit more loosened up. Hopefully everybody's stretched out. I like it, Danielle. I see the wiggling happening. I dig it. And uh, let's get started. So to kick off, everybody, I want to make sure everybody's got a, a toy on hand, something that they like, something that they enjoy playing with. It can be big. It can be small. Uh, I have a ton around me. Uh, but for this first exercise, for the first five minutes, uh, I do want us to start with something a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit easier, maybe one of uh, you know the toys that can fit in your hand or maybe something that's around you. So for me, uh, I'm picked up a little Hot Wheel car because uh, why not? I love Hot Wheels and I also love uh, little Volkswagen Beetles. So this is kind of a nice one that I just have in my hand. And to get started, guys, uh, I want us to draw the car. I want us to draw with a toy. Oh, I see some nice uh, stuffed animals. There's some nice action figures happening. Great, great. Let's just make sure, see, get a feel for it. Hold it in your hand, understand what your toy is, really get an idea of what it is that we want to draw. What is it that you like about it? Do things move on it? I have some wheels on mine. Mine have some metal parts and some glass parts. Uh, and to really get started, I just want you guys to draw what you feel. So there's no need to see it. I'm actually going to have uh, mine in my hand. And I'm just going to get started and draw. Uh, so just so you guys have an understanding, um, I'm starting off with just some simple pencil and paper for today. Uh, I will be jumping on to a digital medium a little bit later. But for right now, just simple paper, simple pens, simple markers, and just draw what you feel, you know, draw what you imagine. And for this one, guys, here's the one rule that we're going to try to have when we're drawing for this. Let's try not to pick up our pen. So that means just with the same stroke, just draw what you feel. Just draw what you feel, draw what you think you have in your hand. I make sure I'm going to start with the top of my car here, make sure I'm drawing in and out. And I really love what we're feeling here. So just five minutes real quick. Don't worry too much about what you're drawing. Just worry about what you're feeling. Make sure that you're really getting 
all of those nice shapes, all of those nice forms, whatever it is that you feel that you see, make sure you get it in there. I got some nice two wheels. These are going. And again, if you don't have to pick up your pencil, don't. Just make sure you draw nice and big wherever it is that your drawing is, whatever it is that you feel. Remember, this is just a warm up. We're just here for a couple minutes, just making sure we're drawing what we feel. It's a nice time to clear your mind and to really pay attention to what's in your hand and what the shapes are. Now, again, this is just line. This is just a nice opportunity to do some big old shapes. And remember, we stretched for a reason. Now we have our hands ready, we're nice and loose. So make those big old shapes as we see them. Okay. Well, I kind of have a pretty nice start. Uh, I'm gonna try to do one more because we have a couple more minutes here, but I can have a quick little screen share so everybody can take a look at what we got going. Quick drawings, really, really quick drawings. All we're doing here is drawing what we see, drawing what we imagine. So again, feeling out the big shapes, filling out the big circles. Let's just keep it going. If you have a new page, go jump on a new page. If you're still on your first drawing, keep going on your first drawing. We have about two more minutes on this one. Now I'm gonna get one more in here and I'm gonna switch up my toy actually. I have a little sword here uh, for, that I've uh, actually been designing uh, with the Pixar team. So this has been really, really fun for the new movie Lightyear. So just a quick little toy, again, something that fits in your hand, something, little accessory, something that adds a little bit of storytelling, filling it out of my hand. Just kind of taking a breath, making sure we're nice and stretched. And just drawing what we feel, drawing what we see. You know, how do we tell a story with this? Really paying attention to the shapes that are happening. Making sure that's on there. I got the handle. Great. All right, team. Let's start finding a good stopping point as we can find it. And once those warm ups are all done, we can get started on our main project for the evening today. Great. So here's my last one. Again, just really drawing what I see there, drawing what I feel. I had big long lines on this one, which was always really, really fun. So trying to get those big shapes in there versus something a little bit more round, like the Hot Wheel toy car that I had. So big shapes is drawing what we see, making sure we get those, we get those shapes in there. Great. So now that we're wrapping up, we're gonna move on to the main event here. All right, team, so based on our materials, uh, what we're gonna ask to do here is we're gonna ask to make a quick still life. Now, if you don't know what a still life is, it's pretty simple. It's essentially a whole bunch of stuff put together that you wanna draw. So a lot in life is a still life. Uh, we're gonna see if we can get our favorite toys as part of this still life. So go ahead and grab those two, three, as many toys as you have and try to put them somewhere in your room so that they're far enough away so you can see them clearly, but make sure they're not too close so you don't knock anything over. So make sure you put them comfortably in front of you, uh, put as many toys as you can, and um, let's try to overlap them if you can. Try to put one toy in front of the other to make it interesting. You know, are we telling a story somehow? Are these toys that talk to each other? Are these toys enemies? Are they friends? Uh, how would they interact? And then I can show you guys the toys that I've been putting up in front of me. All right, everybody. So we are on activity number two. And activity number two is asking for a still life. So let's see what we got in front of us. If we can see my screen, this is my current still life. So I got a ton of toys happening. Uh, if we can see in the middle there, we've got the big bad Buzz Lightyear. So that is one of the products that I've actually have uh, had the, the fortunate ability to work on. Something that uh, for, the last, uh, for the last bit has been on our minds and uh, we're really happy to see them out there. So if we have any Buzz Lightyear fans in the audience, uh, those are coming soon and we're really happy to show those. So again, I like a ton of different stuff. So because I like a ton of different stuff, I have a ton of different toys. So if we can see uh, any uh, Dragon Ball fans, I got a plastic Goku happening there on the side. 
uh, next to my Buzz Lightyear, as well as a couple plants. Uh, if we can tell, there's a real plant and there's a fake one so that uh, we can have some different variety happening. If you can spot the Legos, type it in the chat. Uh, I also have a little robot Gundam and easel and some boxes. Now, again, trying to make sure we overlap our shapes, put the items in front and make sure that there's something that you like. Um, remember, if you don't have toys, uh, you can always draw anything. Boxes count, tables count. Uh, if you can see my screen, I see some buildings out the window. I see some trees around me. Those are gonna be some real fun shapes that I'm probably gonna work on. So uh, just gather up anything you got. Let's put shapes and let's put toys in front of other toys and let's get started. Great, so for this guy, I'm actually gonna be working digitally so we can work a little bit faster on my end. But remember guys, you can work with anything you want, pencils, markers, pens, crayons, whatever you find is totally fair game. Here is my blank sheet of paper. So hopefully everybody's got a sheet of paper in front of them, the bigger, the better. Um, and the first step is actually a fun one, guys. I want you to feel your page, okay? I want you to really get an understanding of what you're gonna be drawing. because There's gonna be a couple different rules here and I wanna make sure that we all are on the same page. So first up, feel your page. How big is it? How much room do you have? How much space do you have? How much can your arm move around? Can you feel the edges of your page? That's great. Try to get from one point to the other. Make sure you're really feeling it out and getting an idea of what you're gonna be drawing on. Okay, so a couple rules for this type of drawing. This is called continuous line drawing. Now, continuous line drawing, fancy way of saying, don't pick up your pencil, okay? For this type of exercise, we're gonna try to just go one line for the whole thing. Now, sounds a little bit weird. Maybe some of us have done this, maybe some of us haven't. The idea is to trust our eyes, okay? Everything that we see, we can draw. I know it sounds intense, but I promise you can do it. And this kind of exercise will really help train you and really help you know get your eyes accustomed to drawing whatever it is that you see. Just a matter of making sure that your brain communicates to your hand in the right kind of way. So once you have an idea of what your page feels like, once you see your still life, once you see the drawings and the shapes that you have in front of you, there's only one thing to do but start, guys. Now, the nice thing is that there's no such thing as a bad drawing, so just make sure you start and go. Now, the thing I'm gonna be starting off with here is starting off from one point of my page all the way to the other point of my page. Now, as you can see, I'm not picking up my tool here. We're trying to go one big old shape into the next big old shape. Now, it works with any kind of page that you have. Just try to draw as much as you can see. Now there's another rule here that if any experts, any guy, anybody that wants some next steps or some harder steps can try. And the next rule is you don't look at your page. Now that's a really hard rule. I know a lot of us wanna make sure we see what we're drawing and you might say, Mr. Carlos, why wouldn't I look at my drawing? Well, the truth is you wanna make sure that your eyes are doing a good job, not really your hand. You wanna make sure that you're seeing everything that you can. Now, as you see, I'm changing up from one part of my still life to the other. I'm drawing, if you guys can tell, this is Buzz and his jetpack, drawing his dome over here. That way we can start with his head. And keep in mind, I actually didn't start with my toy. I started with the plant. And as I was drawing the plant, I got a little bit further along and I noticed that, whoa, Buzz Lightyear, is in front of the plant. So what do you do? Well, you just draw the next step. And now for anybody that's at this next stage, you might wonder, well, if I can't pick up my pencil, how do I draw the next thing? Well, if you're taking a look at the demo here, actually one of the best ways to go about it is just to continue the line. Find a creative way to get from one point to the next. Now I'm just drawing in some details here. I see some other big shapes, putting in some more information and really trying to trust my eye here. Now remember, don't go too fast. You can go as fast as your eyes need to. And I don't know if anybody noticed, but if you go off the page, that's okay. It's totally fine. Don't worry if you go off the page, just try not to draw on your table if you don't have a table to really get too crafty in. But from there, making sure those big shapes are there. And oop, I see the plant. 
So I'm gonna draw some more information here on the plan. And then I have some more toys happening, creating some big shapes this way, some other big shapes here. So really trying to get all of those shapes in as much as you can. And remember, try not to pick up your pen if you don't have to. Sometimes you go off the page and that's okay. Like right here, boom, I went off, but I went right back in and just drew the next thing I see. Now, remember, you might say, hey, I'm done drawing, but there's always more. See right now, as I'm drawing, I'm noticing that there's things outside my window. And if you see them, well, guess what? Draw them. They're totally part of your still life, even though you might not necessarily have put them out there. They still count. They're still in the world. They're still worth drawing. So really getting your hand moving, trying to get to all parts of your page as much as you possibly can. And trust me, guys, if your drawings look weird, that means you're doing it right. These drawings are always really kooky. It's always a fun time. So this is probably a good stopping point for me. Uh, because I'm working digitally for this time around, I'm actually going to go in and add my color uh, through some really interesting forms. Now, I'm actually going to start with some line color. Uh, I'm going to get a nice bright green in here because green is one of my favorite colors. And it's always a nice opportunity to start drawing lines where you think you didn't ordinarily have lines. Now, uh, because I'm working digitally, I have some couple options here, but I am going to start with some green lines doing kind of some similar contouring following some of those early lines that I had and trying to see how I can add more information. You know, is there details that I didn't necessarily get to add the first time that I could add this time around? Now I'm gonna start with line, but remember, you can also start blocking in some big old shapes here too. And if I switch from, let's say, having a thin marker or pencil or pen to having more of a thicker marker, we can start getting some really interesting blocks in. And again, there's different ways to add color. If you guys got some watercolors, that's always a really nice opportunity to start overlapping your colors. So at this point in our drawing, my new priority becomes, well, how can I fill all of this up? You know, I'm seeing a lot of whites in here. You know, how can I really, really fill it all up? So I'm gonna go ahead and change my brush here. I might change my tool up for a bigger one. I'm gonna get this nice big old hard brush and see what happens when we start putting in some big blocks of color. Now, if you guys remembered in my scenario, I had a big old window in front of me. Now remember guys, what these drawings look like isn't really the big concern here. All we're really looking for is making sure that you're following your eyes and that you're staying true to what you see. Now this process always used to help me when I had trouble drawing things that I didn't necessarily know how to draw. Cool, so I just added in a little bit of sky there that wasn't there before. So that's always fun, getting all the detail in that we can. Now remember, our eyes capture a lot of information. So even though we think we're done drawing, there's always something else to be seen. Can we add something else? Is there parts that don't have enough color yet? So I see down here, I have a corner. I'm gonna try to fill this in. Cool. 
So I'm just about reaching a stopping point on this one. Thank you, everyone. Fantastic showing. Uh, thanks again for having me. It's always a pleasure to be here with the team. Uh, and don't stop drawing, everybody. Keep it going. Great, great work. Well, we want to give a huge thanks to Mr. Carlos today for our project with the students 8 to 12 years old who joined us from different cities across the country. Thanks to all the students and families who joined us today and everybody who is watching this recording on our virtual platforms. Remember to take a picture of your work and send it to info at projectart.org. We would love to see your work. Mm -hmm.